you've obviously captained Scotland for a number of years um, and probably did it in, in I'd imagine in, in your junior age groups as well. What's in your experience, maybe even from people that you know have captained you, what makes a good captain? It's quite yeah. a hard question, sorry. Yeah, no, it's a, it's, a, it's a really good question because what the perception be? You know, people are thinking, what's a good captain? I imagine, and this might not be true for everyone, but I imagine people would think someone with quite a bit of authority and, you know, uh, uh, maybe instructing people, um, this is what we need to do, this, you know, you need, you need a bit of that. Um, <clears throat> and what happens if you are that, uh, you know, then you'd maybe think that someone who is quite uh, introverted, perhaps, you think, well, they're not going to make a good captain, are they? You know, um, who's to say that they wouldn't? You know, these are all things to these are, these are all things to consider. And um, what I learned from my I captained Scotland at junior ages, um, all the way through to under nineteen World Cups. <clears throat> I captained Durham, the academy, through to Durham second team. Uh, I captained North Ants for a year, and when Alex Wakeley got injured. Uh, I captained Scotland before that and only on my last stint, this last stint, do I actually appreciate what leadership is. Uh, so think about all those learning and all, all what I've got wrong along that way. You know, hopefully I've got some of it right along the way, but I didn't appreciate what, I, what captaincy actually was. So um, what I learned over that journey was you don't have to be a certain way to be a captain. Just be yourself. Be yourself. Uh, try and understand others as best you can and understand situations and when and when not to speak to people and when you might need to give a little bit of tough love uh, I'd say that's a work on for me still because um, just my personality is a bit outgoing and wants to be f friends with everyone so um, challenging people is the harder side of the captaincy for me but I understand that um, but just be yourself you know who's to say a captain needs to be that someone who with loads of authority all the time you know, you can still lead in a different way. You can keep the group together and make them lead from inside the group. You can um, get people on your side within the group that are going to do the hard, the heavy lifting sometimes and keep players in line. Um, you can, I can still be an outgoing person, but not have to show complete, um, not instruct all the time, you know? So understand what that means, what type of person you are and, and, and mold that into a captaincy. Captain, a cap, captaincy doesn't mean being completely full of authority. Authoritarian might be the word. Um, that, that's what I would say. Just be you. Be the best version of you within a captaincy role. I think it, um, it just from my kind of memory of you know Scottish cricket in the last few years and and, and you know your career, I, I would I would probably say that you know if there was a different type of captain other than you, who, who maybe was that kind of, you know, authoritarian, um, you know, kind of told everyone what to do all the time and was very strict and that kind of that kind of thing, you know, would you have pulled off some of the victories that you have? Because I think you're obviously being that outgoing character and a well-liked person. You've obviously pulled though that group of players together to perform to the best of their ability. So um, I think the leader is obviously absolutely vital, that, vital in that, as is the relationship, you know, the, the coach. But what, other than that leader, what, how, how can you, how, how else can you pull people together in a team to, to perform to the best of their abilities? Yeah, um, look, just going back to some of the performances that we have had, you know, that's certainly not just been my doing at all. You know, it's been the, the coaches the, and the support staff building the right environment. And it's been the players engaging into our journey as, as a group as a group of players as a, as a country so we we had to you know it's important that you uh, give yourself all some direction of where you want to go and that's that's generally quite easy with an associate team an associate country because every game has so much meaning there's always an element of qualifying for a world cup along the line there you know i think i can count on one hand the amount of bilateral series we've had so by bilateral i mean you know, it's just a one-off tournament. It might go towards rankings, perhaps, but it, it won't go towards qualifying. On one hand, and how many years? I think someone mentioned that 19 years I've been playing now. So uh, 
So actually having a journey of where you want to get to um, is a lot e easier to put together and put down on a piece of paper uh, and get the guys to buy into. County cricket's different because you're just going to rock up and play the same teams year in, year out. So you have to find it internal challenges there and, and individual challenges as players to keep yourself going. But um, leadership, leadership comes in, in many ways, but it's important to value those people around you. It's important to give yourselves some goals as, as a team and some direction. And it's important the players buy into that. And the only way to do that, I believe, is to have, uh, get the players, have the players' involvement when you're setting that up. And, and what are those things that, the intricate details below that? Yes, we want to get, get to a World Cup, but what does that mean? What do we need to do below that? What are the behaviours we need to show? What are the skills we need to have to work on? And um, the next part is actually uh, giving the players the trust and the belief that they've got the skills to do that. You know, we haven't got the player pool to deal with, uh, to pick from, but we have to 100% give the back into these players that we have to play this style to, to beat the best. And uh, that was a journey we, we went on. Look, we could speak about this for hours, I reckon, actually, but <laughs> that would be, in my long-winded, short-winded way, um, that would be my the direction I'd give give people try and have some kind of direction and understand what the detail is underneath that uh, and um, trust and bring the game out that we all believe that we all agreed on that is the style which is going to give us our best chance to, to winning and, and back it 100%. Yeah there's many many levels isn't it there's you know giving the team a goal there's giving those individuals a role um, getting to know them as an individual so you can use them in the right situations um, yeah, several several things that you know, are gonna gonna make you successful in that. With with the the role of a coach, you've obviously you know had a lot of captaincy experience. What has the the best coaches that you've been under as a captain done with you? Have they have have, have some of them been strict with you, or have some of them, and kind of wanted to dictate things, or you know have they given you the freedom to 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 then obviously like you do trust the players to to, to do the job? Yeah. Yeah, like there's been loads of different coaches along the way, and I, you know, those people and the players around me have effectively shaped who I am today and my beliefs, you know, and, and my styles of play and my styles as a captain. The coach is hugely influential. Um, I've we've had I've had coaches that are meticulous in detail. I've had coaches that have been the other end of the spectrum. Um, and sometimes for a coach, it's a little bit of timing too, of where the, the group is and, and does your fit just fit a bit better right now for where the players are? Because there's been some coaches previously in our journey that have done fantastic jobs, but maybe haven't got the limelight for where the teams ended up getting to. So there's been a, there's been a piece from this coach and a piece from this coach, but actually, um, because of what they've learned previously and what they're learning now, it comes together into a, a really nice mix of where, where you need to get to. So a coach is, is vital to, to helping shape players, but they're, they're vital to instilling values and, and um, uh, the journey in which your team, you know, it needs to, needs to go on. And um, they, they have to manage very carefully, you know, understand the players and the, the skills and the personalities among in that group to help shape it as best you know you can't you certainly can't come in with one method into any group you might you might hit it lucky with one one team that you, that method's going to work but you've probably you've got to come in open-minded and be flexible and try and put the jigsaw pieces together and, and make it work like that so I've had I've had a few different coaches and each of them has played a vital part I would say there's not one coach that's come in, you know, some coaches help with mindset, some's helped with technique, some, it's all, it all comes together. So people, players need to appreciate that coaches will add different value at different times in your career and um, not just think, oh, because he's doing it a different way that they're a bad coach. This, it's not the case. Learn from that. Definitely. Um, final thing on, uh, on kind of captaincy side of things, you, you sort of alluded to it earlier, but you, you know, I don't think anyone, no one really likes confrontation. And uh, how how does a captain deal with that situation? You know, whether it's um, 
you know, you're, you're pulling off a bowler or you're having to have that conversation with the coach that you're dropping someone that you really don't want to do, you, you, you know, you obviously you've got to, you've got to do it for the, you know, for the good of the team, but how, how do you go about those awkward conversations? Yeah, I think, first of all, it's clear to understand whose role it is. Whose role is delivering some of this information? Is it you as captain or is it the coach? And um, I've been very fortunate to have conversations with a number of uh, international captains over the years, but um, it, it's, it's so important that you clear that up early because there's not one way. Who's to say it's always a captain's job to, to deliver the bad news? Maybe it is a captain's job at times, uh, and but you're also there to lead the team on the day and, and score runs. So your job, my job as a player is to score runs as well as lead the team. And you've also got other leaders in, in that team. So um, you've, I think the first role is figuring out who's going to do some of the heavy lifting there. Uh, and, and then if it is you, be prepared for a tough conversation and also be prepared that maybe you're making the wrong decision, you know, and, and cause every decisions, all decisions, they're not always, they're not, they're, they're not easy and be prepared for a tough conversation because if a player really cares about their position, they'll, they'll kick up a fuss about it. And, and you've also got to be okay that they're going to kick up a fuss about it. But if you're feeling fairly strongly about something uh, that this situation is happening with the player you need to be able to voice that that to them they might not accept it at the time but hopefully given a bit of time they will accept it so um for me conflict is tricky uh, but i'm willing to do it and, and the biggest decision that for me that helped me have those conversations is actually understanding that they will be upset a lot of the time but actually I've, I've got to be a little decisive and make a decision at times and sometimes you're not going to make the right decision so be okay with sometimes making wrong decisions but back that decision 100% whatever you're going to make so that would be my uh, my direction around um, conflict situations it's not easy it's not it's not going to be easy but back it and um, you know, don't shy away from these conversations. If they need to be had, they need to be had. I think the, you know, the players need that clarity, don't they? They want to know, you know, obviously why they haven't been selected, but then also what they can do to, you know, kind of win you over essentially for the, yeah. for the next game. So it's just that, that, yeah, that, that clarity of, um, of how you communicate, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Um, you, you create, sorry, you, you create grey areas around um, communication. If you don't know who's, if you don't define who's doing what role, because often you think, oh, well, they'll say it, you know, maybe between you and the coach. There's a gray, there's gray areas in there where it overlaps and you've got to try and minimize those gray areas. So you need to communicate well with your coach or your support staff with the message or they need to communicate well with you with the message. Uh, it's a two way thing. So you can both ask if you're unsure. And then you have to be clear with who's delivering it. And, you know, so, so that there isn't any different messages coming from different people that that's that's a great starting point to to getting across some tough messages yeah i think it's a, a real it's a key issue in club cricket i would have said you know pe people dropping down teams and you've got you know probably a chairman of selectors or a, you know someone who's in charge of selection then you've got your captains who does the communication i mean it's probably something for every club to to take note of in yeah. terms of um you know how to manage players because you're going to get players that drop down to the twos and, and then a sounding off to everyone in the twos because you know how they've been treated it's just you've got to make it you've got to make the process work haven't you i think it's even harder at club cricket if i'm being honest because yeah. it is a social game you can't force people to be turning up uh you know you'd ask people to turn up in time and show show good etiquette to the, your teammates and your and your club and things like that but people go on holiday as well or people will go to a festival and all of a sudden you've got someone scoring runs in the second team but you've got a first team player who's maybe gone to a festival and missed a weekend and now what do you do what situation you're in now so that's that's a really tough situation so ironing some of those communication lines out early and and probably giving people as good a picture as you possibly can around what role they might play if they do come in does help but it's even harder because you might not see someone for a couple of weeks because they're playing second team and they might not turn up to practice that one day that week because they had work or they had to go spend time with their family or something so all of a sudden 
I think it's even harder with club cricket. Professional sport, it's different because people people are there at practice. You can have those conversations. 